Thank you so much for joining us for this interview. You've obviously just come back from a trip uh, to the U.S., a big yes. meeting there. Tell yes. us about that and about the, the U.S.-Kenya policy moving forward. Sure. Quite remarkably, I actually met with President Obama. You know, he doesn't meet with all the... Uh, uh, all the um, ambassadors, of course, he doesn't have time. But Kenya was important enough for that. Kenya is at the at the center. Right. So I met with him, and of course, he is very focused on the process of reform and change in Kenya. And I, I, the the U.S. view, his view, the U.S. view, to sum it up, is that we think the referendum was very positive. We're positive about the implementation process as well. Uh, but also cautious and wanting to see it carried out in the letter and spirit. Let's talk about ICC. Yes. Impunity. What, what um, is the U.S. position on this whole process? Well, uh, you know, the, the, the three biggest issues in Kenya that we've always cited is, is the culture of impunity, negative ethnicity, and pervasive poverty. And that is a, an equation that res can result in real crisis, as we saw in 2007 and 2008. Uh, so uh, accountability, ensuring accountability at all levels is absolutely critical. Um, that means ending the culture of impunity and it means holding people accountable under this international criminal court process for perpetrating violence in the post-election period. Mm -hmm. So we strongly support the ICC. And you know, several people have started to say now, well maybe we can take this process back to Kenya because uh, we now are going to have an independent judiciary. Well, of course, that's not appropriate at all. The ICC has taken jurisdiction. Kenya's not going to have a fully developed judiciary for quite some time to come. So it's important that these cases be carried out, prosecuted by the ICC, and we strongly support that. And then separately, mm -hmm. Judy, there are a number of cases, obviously prominent cases recently, and I, I'm not going to comment on whether you know, the ministers are guilty of something or not because I haven't seen all those files and I can't make that judgment. That's for Parliament. These are the corruption and, cases and, and that we are seeing. Yes. Right. And that's for Parliament and, and the courts to decide, not mm -hmm. for me to decide. But what I do think is positive is that there's more scrutiny uh, on cases of alleged corruption. Uh, and at the same time, Piola Lumumba, the head of the Kenyan Anti-Corruption Commission, is also becoming more active, which is positive. So what I sense, to, to, to sort of sum it up, is uh, that the process of change and, and reform in Kenya is actually accelerating. Mm -hmm. uh, there are obviously a lot of forces that are opposed to that, but you feel this sense of momentum coming from the people, and that's what we want to help. But as I, as I do look back on, on the time I've been here, uh, clearly what stands out, I think, is the, 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 the efforts that the U.S. made to work with Kofi Annan and the Kenyan people to help to resolve the post-election crisis and then push forward that reform agenda. And I think we played a role perhaps in, in, in helping to ensure that the referendum uh, was positive and, 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 and peaceful. Well, thanks for making the time to join us, especially at this yeah. time when, as you've said, the focus is on corruption and quite a number of ministers, uh, you know, having to answer questions and uh, we'll see how things pan out, but it's been a pleasure having you in studio. Uh, it's been great. Thank you for having me. Asante. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.